Nathan, what is this? It's a towel. I don't, I'm trying to watch. I know I'm trying what to watch TV. it is, but why is it folded like this? I don't, babe, I'm trying to. Hold on. Can we talk about this later? I'm trying to watch this YouTube. Channel. We've talked so many times. The towels don't get folded like this because they don't go in the closet well like this. Hey, fine. Here. That's not gonna work. You have to fold it in half once, and then triple fold it, and then fold it in half again. That's how it goes. Wow. You're really gonna act like that. Yeah. <laughs> You're a poopy head. Oh, let's be real mature. Let's get into that. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm Nathan. And you've joined us for Marriage Monday on the Marriage by Design podcast, a time where we have a lot of laughs. And we talk about marriage by God's design, how we see that in the Bible, and then how we practically live that out in our lives. That's right. So sometimes we have this idea for a cold open where we're going to have like a mock fight. <laughs> um, because today we're talking about fighting fair. Um, and then we start and I just can't stop laughing. <laughs> um, so there's that. Oops. And when we throw the props down and then it knocks the lighting over. It didn't knock it over. So there's that. Yeah, welcome. Um, today we're going to, on Marriage Monday, we're going to talk about fighting fair. So we've talked on this channel about communication. We've talked about um, a number of contentious topics, um, but we wanted to talk specifically today about fighting fair. And really, we wanted to be practical too. So the first half of this video is going to be talking about a couple of points that we wanted, you know, just to make very clear to you guys for you to think about as you're thinking about fighting with your spouse. Now I know I'm sure there's someone watching this video that is taking issue with me right now about calling it a fight. Um, I know different couples believe different things about do we call fairly. it a, a disagreement Conflict. or a tiff or a, you know, whatever. For the purposes of this video, we're calling them fights. But that doesn't mean like necessarily like a fight, right? It means like an argument. Right. Um, and... Look at if you're a heated difference of opinion, right? An opportunity to grow in communication. Right, sure. We should yes. we should have spent we should have done a cold open where we just tried to come up with different, different euphemisms yes. for fights. Yeah, so uh, that's what we're talking about. So if if I when I use the word fight throughout this argument or throughout this uh, throughout this discussion, oh, we're just you know, have know an that right here. Um, you know I'm talking about arguments or disagreements, whatever you cool. want to call it. Got it. So um, the first half of this video is going to be a couple of points for you to keep in mind as you consider how you and your spouse argue, or really for most of these, for you and your boyfriend or or um, fiance, as the case may be. Right. Um, some of them, as you will see when we get to them, are exclusively for married couples. Um, spoiler, it's me doing a video, so that means at some point sex is going to be discussed. Of course. Um, <clears throat> but the first half of the video will not include any sex talk. Uh, it is going to be a couple of things for you to keep in mind with regards to how you and your spouse argue. The second half of the video I'm calling Fight Hacks. These are some things that Andrea and I have found. And, and let, me, let me just preface this by saying... If there's ever been a video that we're experts in talking about, it's fighting. Yeah, we've talked about this before. So in our glory days of chaos in our marriage, we, on several occasions, would it's when we had either no kids or one child at the time, we would start fighting in the evening or when we had a child after we put him to bed. And... Then we would fight all night long until the sun came up and it was time to get ready for work and go to, and get ready and go to work. I mean, it was all literally all night long without sleep. Yeah, crazy. Multiple times. Not that wasn't like a one time thing. Right. That happened more than once. So right. we are experts at how to fight unfairly, Not an expert, but we want to give you some hacks on. Things we've learned. Uh, you know, how, things we've learned and how to move from fighting unfairly to fighting fairly. So with that lead in, let's start with. Two main points that I have, one I'll take and one you can take on fighting fair. Okay. Um, and the first one I wanted to talk about is when we get into situations where we're going to have an argument, we're going to have a fight, whatever you want to call it, resolve your mind on the right things. Because when we get in 
contentious situations, it's easy for us to let our minds wander to the wrong things that can really lead us down a chaotic path in our arguments. So I want to give you a couple of sub points to think about. The first one is when we argue, as with really anything that we do in marriage, but this is an easy way to get tempted off course. When we argue, we want to remember that honoring God is paramount to Mm. all else. It's paramount to winning the argument. It's paramount to making your point. It's paramount to changing someone's mind. The most important thing is that we honor the Lord even in our arguments. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4.26 says, the first part of it says, Yet in your anger, do not sin. All right, we're going to get to the second half of that a little bit later on in the hacks. But for the first the first half of it is, yet in your anger, do not sin. Which shows that anger is not a sin. Right, that was going but, to be my first point. You're right. Sorry, but... No, it's good. But frequently, but at times, you the way in which you act in that anger is a sin. That's right. So we talk about anger as a blessing from the Lord in that it serves as a should serve as a bit of a road sign like a like a flashing red light in our lives. Mm-hmm. Right where when we start feeling anger, it's a good time for us to ask this question. Am I upset? The reason why I'm angry is it based on a right that I believe I have that has been infringed or is it on a responsibility that I have that is being subverted, Mm -hmm. right? So the difference is when we're focused on our rights, where's our focus? On me. On me. Selfishly. Right? So if I'm feeling anger because I deserve to be respected, which is true biblically, I do deserve that in our marriage, but when I'm angry because... I have a right to be respected and Andrea is disrespecting me. My focus ultimately is on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and does that mean that we should never share if we feel like we're being disrespected? Well, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But remember, it's in your anger, do not sin. It doesn't say suck it up and don't say anything. But if I'm getting angry and I lash out in that as a result of being focused on my rights, that's where the sin part comes in versus the classic example is Jesus driving the tax collectors and the uh, and the money changers out of the temple yeah so the story with that is he came in and he he was mad and yeah. he overturned tables it's it's a you should go there and read it and you can get the whole background of it yep. but he overturned tables I mean he was angry he actually made a switch he, out, like like yeah, a whip was, like, and whipping. whipped him out of the temple yeah and so you you would think that's so wrong, but right. it, it wasn't. Right. Yeah, because when you think about it, what was he angry about? Was he angry because he had a right to a clean temple and they were screwing up the temple? Well, no, that wasn't his focus. His focus was, I have a responsibility to uphold the law of my father, God. Mm-hmm. And specifically, if you look in the Old Testament, people forget this. If you look in the Old Testament, that sort of money changing and business going on in the temple was specifically forbidden. Mm-hmm. And the Pharisees and Sadducees at the time of Jesus were just choosing to look the other way because they were making money off the deal. Um, and so Jesus was angry not because he was owed a right, but because the responsibility to honor his father and uphold the law was being subverted by those money changers and tax collectors, and it made him angry. Um, So as we think about that, you know, what is it that we're focused on when we get angry? Our rights or our responsibilities? That's the first thing. Yet in our anger, do not sin. So the anger is not the sin. Right, But even in an argument or a fight with our spouse as we're getting angry, using that as those red flashing lights to think about, okay, why am I getting angry? And how maybe am I, I need reacting? To, in that how moment. am I reacting to that? Maybe I need to take some time. Because you can even have away. righteous anger, but then rea- that's react right. in a way that's yeah, simple. That's right. That's right. The second one is, remember that your spouse is a good-willed person. Um, so this is kind of a tricky one and if you've if you've ever been through love and respect you've heard um dr emerson egrich say this before this is a big important one for love and respect and he he doesn't spend a ton of time camped out on it um but this is one where i see a lot of spouses have a difficult Mm -hmm. time because in your mind you start to allow yourself to go down a road that looks something like this Uh, I've asked him to fold the towels a certain way and 
here we are. He folded the laundry and the towels are not folded the way I've asked. Well, why is he not folding them the way I asked? Is it because he, he just forgot? Me. No, it's not because he forgot. It's because he wants to make me angry. He thought about folding the towels the right way and then thought, no, I'm just going to fold them however I want. Screw her. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. he wants to tell me he hates me. And you start going all the way down this path. But each of those thoughts is subverting this idea that your spouse is a good-willed person. Right. Um, and, you know, so for us to land on that, and, and what does it mean to be a good willed person? What it means at the end of the day is your spouse is not actively trying to hurt you, mm-hmm. right? Either emotionally, physically, verbally. And <clears throat> really, it's an easy thing for us to go, well, but he does hurt me or she but does, does hurt me. But does he wake up in the morning and think, what can I do to really make my spouse mad or hurt them or whatever that's right there's very few people like that very few very few but i think there are a lot of spouses that think yeah the problem is i think a lot of a lot of spouses go yeah mine's one of those Mm -hmm. few and and and, i mean most truly bad-willed spouses are like overtly abusive Mm -hmm. relationship type Mm -hmm. situations most of the rest of spouses that i've found when you really talk to them and say Hey, um, you know, do you wake up in the morning and try and find ways to hurt your spouse? What we end up finding out is they're both spouses are acting out of hurt Mm -hmm. um, and not because they actively want to hurt the other person. So this this thinking, you know, in in an argument, thinking my spouse is a good willed person can be very difficult because in the moment emotions are heightened and you your thoughts go along with those emotions. But if you can stop and remember, and you're going to have to help me, where's the verse? What it, In the Bible, there's a verse that says, whatever is good, whatever is right, whatever is true, whatever is honorable. Set your mind on these things. Think about these it's things. It's 1 Peter, I believe. Yeah. And I think it might be 1 Peter 5. And I think that's right. If you, if you can maybe stop yourself as your mind is going on, on this trail of, he wants to hurt me. He, he folded the towels because he hates hates me or because he's just trying to un- undermine me or whatever it is, you know. You can stop and just take a moment to think about some good things about yeah. your spouse. It yeah. changes the trajectory of your thoughts and where you where you choose to go with your mind, your emotions often follow. Yep. So when you're when we say think about your spouse being a good willed person, you may have to, you know, you may have to choose to really, maybe even out loud, think about not just yeah yeah in the back of my head yeah he's a good willed person, but really choose to think about the goodness of that person in that moment. Yeah, it really makes a big difference for what Andrea is going to talk about here in a minute yeah. because you know in order for any argument to be productive, we need to as spouses be unified. We don't need to be unified in, in our thought process on things, but we need to be unified in that we're going to get through this right. together. And the problem is when you start thinking my spouse is not a good willed person, what's, they go from being unified you. with you mm-hmm. to being an enemy. Right. Um, and now you don't want to go anywhere with them as a couple anymore. You want to win the argument yeah. because you're right and they're evil. Right. Right. Um, and that's, that's the problem. It's a problem, frankly, with our country right now. Okay. Um, the last one is... Uh, we need to uh, prefer winning the war versus winning the battle. So what do I mean with that? So when we get in an argument, we can become obsessed with the idea that we need to win the points yes. that we're trying to make mm-hmm. in this argument. I know. Um, and yeah. we can sometimes throw everything into that fight and we're really burning frankly the forest down around us to try and win this one mm-hmm. argument mm-hmm. um proverbs 14 1 says a wise woman builds her home but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands james 3 5 through 8 says so also the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great things how great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire and the tongue is a fire mm. A world of unrighteousness calls the tongue a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, 
and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast of, and bird of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame their tongue. It is it is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Oh man, isn't yikes! That, doesn't that just encourage your heart? <laughs> that is a well. Here's so here's the thing that it, it struck me. If I'm not speaking, I'm probably doing a pretty good job. Yes. Well, um, because, Proverbs said even a fool can be seen as wise if he just shuts his trap. That's right. That's right. It reminds me of the old uh, the old adage of um, better to be thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Yes, yes. It's, it's such That's a great. funny. It's such a funny thing. But in an argument, this is so true. I mean, there we have never sat down with a couple who was in a bad place and said, "Okay, well." Tell us what's going on in your marriage. Tell, tell us a little bit about how you how you communicate. And one of them went, you know what the real problem is? He never says anything. Mm-hmm. Like, that's never the case. Right. Like, it's always, he says this and it really hurts me. Or she says this and it really hurts me. Um, or he talks to me in this way and it really hurts me. It's always something coming out of the mouth that is poisoning the relationship. It's that last sign. It, your tongue is a restless, last verse, your tongue is a restless evil full of deadly poison. It's a really, really important verse for us to remember and, and to, to teach our kids. Um, because, man, sometimes the best thing we can do is closely guard our tongue yes. when we're in arguments yes. and 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 um and fights and you know really when we, when when we go back to the point of would you rather win the war than this battle that's really what we're talking about is so many times you might end up making just that point in that sarcastic biting way or putting together just the right you know blend of pointing out hypocrisy and all the other things that we do that your spouse goes you know fine you win but at what cost Mm -hmm. right at what cost right right so for our for our first for the first thing was resolve your mind on the right things honoring god is paramount your spouse is a good-willed person and we need to rather win the war than win the battle yeah so then the second point here is to be intentional some of that is not allowing, and it's so hard. We struggle with this too, more, me more than Nathan. Not allowing the situation to overcome you, mm. but really choosing intentionality with your actions and your facial expressions yeah. and your, the words that come out of your mouth. That's right. And begin with the end in mind. Right. So how are we beginning with the end in mind then? Well, I mean, I think the idea here is... Kind of the same as the winning the war, you know, not not losing the war to win the battle. Let's remember that at the end of the the day, our marriage is never on the line, which means if you and I are going to be married, Lord willing, bar one of the two of us dying 50 years from now, do I want to fight with you right now at third in a way that (laughs) I'm going to have to pay consequences when we're 50? Right. You know what I mean? Or am I remembering, hey, I want to prefer you as my spouse, and that doesn't mean we don't have difficult conversations, but I want to argue with you in such a way that I'm preserving the happiness right. and love and joy at 50 right. right now at 17. Yeah, and some of that beginning with the end in mind, too, is having working on a marriage where you are getting to the point where you're like, there's no argument that we can have that that is that we're ever fearful that we're splitting up. Sure. We know the only option is to get through it. We're not we're not going around this problem or over it or down below it or whatever. We are marching through this problem and however long it takes us, we're going to choose to get through it. Yeah. And uh, we'll be better because of it. We're we're gonna choose to stay on the same team, choose to stay married. Yep. And that's our end in mind. The road there might be difficult, but do I want to hurt? Do we want to hurt each other along that road, or right. do we want to walk through it with grace? Right. So, so there's then three ways that we can be intentional and begin with the end in mind. First is listening versus speaking. You know that old saying: you have two ears, one mouth. And remember right. that mouth has a tongue that sets fire. So that's right. That's right. 
So it's a <laughs> such a wonderful thing to be a person who chooses to listen and not just give the other person the uninterrupted time, but give them your attention. Yep. You know, there's a difference between, okay, I'm waiting for this person to finish and I'm going to not interrupt, and then it's my turn. Right. There's a difference between that and Excuse me. I'm stopping my thoughts yeah. about what I want to say and I'm trying to listen to their heart. Right. I'm trying to listen to the words that are coming out of their mouth and listen to their heart and try to really understand what is it that's the issue for this person. Yeah. And once I process that, then I can maybe form my thoughts, you know, to add to that. Sure. But there's there's such a big difference there. So listening versus speaking. I I struggle in relationships um, that I can tell every time I'm speaking, the other person's just waiting to talk, you know, <laughs> or they're constantly, I'm talking and they're, oh, huh. You know, they're trying to get, sure. they're waiting for me to just finish my thought until they can. But they're not actually listening. They're not listening. They're just thinking, they're just caring about what they have to say. And it's just, everybody feels, you know, that way about, I want to be heard and I want you to care and not only be caring about what you have to say. So listening versus speaking. Let's, let's purpose to really try to listen and understand the other person rather than be understood because you are not validated when the other person understands you. You're validated just simply because you feel a certain way. Mm. You know, the uh, your spouse understanding your point of view doesn't validate your point of view. Mm. You have your point of view and that's valid enough. So, okay, then another way that we can be intentional is to have communication versus dialogue. So communication, we've had, we did an episode on this, but communication is... Base level, not really getting into the feelings and the thoughts and emotions behind something, but just kind of basic level giving of information. Right. Dialogue is choosing to get into that deep level of back and forth dialogue. This is what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling. These are my beliefs and where they come from. And really choosing to share that with somebody and trust that person with the, with that information totally. you know not only the information but the heart behind that yep and then and then the other person have taking the opportunity to do the same right so communicating is really more bottom level communicating about maybe events talking about events but but not really sharing heart behind that right yeah, and again, as Andrea mentioned, we did an entire video on communication versus dialogue, and I'll uh, link right. to that here if you're on So YouTube. think about that in when you're fighting. If I'm just telling you, well, this is wrong, and this is wrong, and blah, 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 and we have fights like that for sure, that's, that's communicating. That's not really sharing... This is, I feel this way, I'm struggling with this, and this is why. I want you to hear my heart behind that. And mm -hmm. then allowing the other person to process that and dialogue back with you about how they're, how they process that and their thoughts on that yeah. and how they feel about that. It's good. So it's good. And then another thing is pride versus humility. I don't know about you, but pride from the other person can wreck a fight in an instant. Sure. If I, if, I feel like Nathan has pride about something that we're arguing about. It just sets me off. And I, sh of course, should be willing to just think of the good things. Like he was talking about, you know, choosing to think he's a good-willed person. Maybe it's not pride that he has right now, and I'm reading it wrong. But he's a good-willed person, and I, should, and I can say, hey, I feel like you're really prideful. And if he chooses to continue to say prideful, that's his issue and not deal, you know, not worry about that. But... You can control yourself. So if so, choosing to have humility in your arguments and choosing to really prefer the other person and try to understand them and not think I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. I just need to communicate my point and that's all. Goes so far. Sure. With when you're having arguments yeah. when you're fighting. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, listening versus speaking, communication versus dialogue, and 
pride versus humility. That's great. So what are our hacks? All right, so, hacks? so now we've got fight hacks. Our fight thing. hacks. So I thought we'd just go back you and punch forth. First. Maybe share these. That's abuse, and now it's on the internet. <laughs> So, all right. So first one that I had, make prayer part of your fights. Woo! This is something that uh, we don't necessarily do a good, a great job of, but there are some couples that I'm super inspired by that are great. And then um, disarms this. immediately. That's right. Um, if if you are as a couple, um, take your spirituality seriously, your relationship with the Lord seriously. There's like no better way to. Um, start a fight off on the right with the right uh, end in mind yes. and the right focusing on the yep. mind, the right things than to pray as a couple before you really go good. into a conversation. Now, this is really difficult if it's like one yeah, of you moment. says something that sets the other off, right? That that's a that's a difficult thing. But it's not as difficult if you know, hey, we need to talk about something that might be controversial or that I know we don't agree on. Um, maybe we pray on the front end yep. that the Lord would unify us, but even before we begin. It's amazing how prayer just disarms things totally. so quickly. Yep. Yeah. Totally. All right, so the second one would be to check your emotions before you jump into a topic that re- may result in a fight. So again, this is more of a planned, I have something that I need to bring up, but but really checking how am I struggling with my rights and do I need to work on that with the Lord? Right. Um, and how do my emotions, if my emotions are super heightened about something, maybe it's best to work that through a little bit on your own before yeah. you have that conversation because emotions just derail things so quickly. Yeah, that's really good. And I, I mean, it certainly can't, you're right. It certainly can be a part on a pre, on a premeditated thing, but I think this comes up a lot in these spur of the moment arguments. Um, and you know, we're, we're so... We can really struggle as human beings for some reason with silence. Mm -hmm. Um, But sometimes that's what we need more of is like if if your spouse says something and all of a sudden you're feeling things, you know, just not responding for 10, 20, 30 seconds while you think about why am I feeling the way that I'm feeling, you might boil what would be a two hour. Yeah argument into a 20 minute argument yeah, just by us, getting your emotions for in us check. that helps so much if the person who's starting to boil over is just just sits there for a little bit and kind of comes back down to a simmer rather than a boil right it changes the yeah, trajectory yeah, no doubt no doubt yeah the th- next one we have is uh exercise not Exercise like running, but exercise like exercise the demons. The demons. <laughs> um, exercise sarcasm from your fights, and I would like encourage you. Shh. I would encourage you get it as much as you can out of your marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, there are again, we've never met with a solid, godly couple where we asked them like, "Hey, what's the key no, to course. your marriage?" And they sarcasm. were like, "Man, we're just sarcastic to each other all the time." Yeah, because there's always a little bit of truth to sarcasm. Yes, and it's just it's a hurt. It's a little bit of a hurtful jab. Yeah, so sarcasm has been described, I think, aptly as stabbing someone with a knife through, through a, a pillow. pillow. Mm-hmm. Um, where, you know, look, sarcasm is a one of those. I mean, Language it's, it of is, men. It's, it's probably a better American pastime at this point than baseball. Yeah, and, and I feel we like... We do sarcasm all the time we in do. this country. But I feel like men actually do it well in their relationships. Like, they can just... Yeah, do it productively between, in guy-guy right, relationships. Yes, right. Yeah, I mean, guys can, you know, we Jab sling sarcasm around and, you know, it's sort of this... Uh, Neanderthal fall thing where you know I hit you with my club and then you hit me with your club and then we grab a beer and it's great. Right. Um, and and yeah, so I would say it's. I mean, no no question, guys use this prolifically. Although I would say even in guy guy relationships, this is problematic. But it's all the more problematic in your marriage because here's the problem: it's problematic in both those for the same reason. Everyone knows now that sarcasm is sort of just the way we communicate with each other. And so if I say something sarcastic and it hurts you, it's hard for you to not have that thought go through your head where you go, yeah, but I just need to get over it because mm, sarcasm is just what we do. Yeah. Um, and man, that's so dangerous in guy-guy relationships, but especially in marriage relationships because 
in guy guy relationships, I think it can cause you to separate ultimately from those guys long term, which is tragic. Mm -hmm. But in marriage, it does that same thing. It creates a fault line in your marriage where you don't feel like you can talk to me about what you're feeling because I'm just going to tell you, hey, you know I didn't mean it. Get over it. Mm -hmm. Right? And so you don't even bring it up and it creates this separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, man, that that sarcasm is might be fun. You're probably really good at it. We're really good at it. But, man, it's just not worth it in your marriage. And it's perpetuated because if your kids, particularly your male kids, your boy kids, um, see you using sarcasm in your marriage, they're going to use it all the more in mm-hmm. their marriage. And it's just going to perpetuate sure. this pain. Sure. Okay, so the next one is recognize the parameters of the fight and don't take bunny trails. That's right. This w- this is what got us a lot of times into those l- all night long fights because we'd be fighting about something and be like, oh yeah, and this, and then we'd start fighting about that about something else, and oh yeah, then this, and you know. So Stupid. recognize the parameters. If you have, and a lot of times those those bunny trails are things that you don't even really need to fight about. They're yep. minor things that you should be just letting go. You That's don't right. have to fight about everything. You can choose to just let things go. But we'll talk about that in a minute. But don't get on the bunny trails. Recognize this is what we're fighting about. This is what we're arguing about. Whatever it is, you know, this is it. And we're staying here and not going anywhere else. Right. And that's it. Right. So stay within your parameters of that. Argument. Right, and if you if you struggle as a couple recognizing that, then probably should start setting parameters. Yeah. Right. To, this is okay, what we're talking about. We're going to talk about this for the next thirty minutes, unless we finish that conversation early. Right. Yep. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the next one that Andrew mentioned and, and did a good job of, so I'm not going to actually spend a ton of time here. Is major in the majors, minor in the minors, um, and what that means is recognize when something is a big deal and when it's not. Because yeah, I mean, I don't know if you know, but you don't have to actually fight about everything that irks you. Right. And in fact, <laughs> particularly guys, who husbands who are watching this, you shouldn't do that. Because no, as, as but, but particularly as men, you have a mantle of spiritually leading the family, which means there may be those times when you need to express to your spouse that this thing is a big deal. Mm -hmm. The problem is, if everything that happens is a big deal to you, then when God puts something on your heart and says, man, this really is a big deal, your spouse is going to go, oh yeah, is this a big deal? Like when I put the toilet paper on going backwards instead Mm -hmm. of going forwards? Right, if everything's a big deal, nothing's a big deal. Um, So we need to recognize... What are majors? What are minors? Doesn't mean we don't ever bring up minors. I never would suggest sweeping things under the rug. But maybe coming in a million miles an hour with the force of a hurricane about the toilet paper issue isn't maybe wise. But reality, too, is that, no, we shouldn't sweep things under the rug. But we do not need to fight about every single issue. There are maybe issues that you have that are legitimate issues that you need to work out on your own with the Lord and let it go. Because you cannot bring everything up to your spouse and and expect that (laughs) you're going to have a good marriage. You know? There's so many things that you can deal with on the Lord by yourself and really choose to make that not a deal at all without ever involving your spouse. That's totally true. And and this whole victim mentality where everything that happens is a smash against you mm-hmm. um, is not going to set you up well in marriage and it's not going to set you up well in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's not God honoring. Um, God did not deliver us victory on the cross so that we could walk around as people that take up offense for everything. Right. Um, we need to be people that go... You know what? There's a lot of things that offend me. God, you're just going to have to take yes. that because I don't have emotional capacity to deal with that. Um, I'm dealing with big adult things. I need to put some of these small things on him and let it go. That one ended up taking longer than we thought. So then the next one is take a break when you need it at times. Get away. But do it respectfully. So that doesn't mean you're going to march off in the middle of the conversation and exactly slam the door. Right. You know, if... So that shouldn't be used as an excuse to bail out of conversation or an excuse to be rude to somebody else, to your spouse. 
But if emotions are being heightened or you feel like I don't have a good grasp on what I want to say or whatever, that, or I feel like I need to deal with the Lord on this for a little bit first, whatever, I need to get some control of myself, excuse yourself from the conversation. I need some time by my, I need some time away from this conversation. Let's come back and set a plan. Let's come back in 30 minutes. Let's come back tomorrow evening. Mm-hmm. Let's whatever. You have a plan. And then the one who bails is the one who's responsible to come back and right. do that. The other person can keep you accountable. But but don't be a nag. But don't just say, we're going to come back in 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes later, you're like, oh, I feel fine. We don't need to talk about it. No, yeah, don't come do back that. in 30 yeah. minutes and do it. The point is that you feel fine about it. So now you can talk about it right. without just being Right. Just because emotional. you feel fine doesn't mean that the discussion should end right. there's something that needs to be finished there and maybe just the finish is i'm sorry i was wrong with how i treated you will you forgive me yeah I, there's th- that's the only resolution i need right now it's good so that's uh, good yeah take a break if you need it but don't use it as a way to bail out good so when you mentioned maybe you need to come back tomorrow night they're guaranteed is somebody that was watching this who has read their bible and don't knows let the, sun the, go down the second anger. half of ephesians uh, 4 26 mm-hmm. and into 27 so we read the first part earlier it says yet in your anger do not sin the second part says do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil so uh, when we as the thought process has gone for a long time that you should never go to bed angry angry at your spouse which i agree with yes but you can go to bed there's a there's a lot of people that equate anger with we got to have everything buttoned up Mm -hmm. anger really at the end of the day whose responsibility is it to deal with the anger right so right so it's not your job to keep your spouse up all hours of the night because you feel like the conversation hasn't been resolved. Mm-hmm. It's actually your job to get on your knees before the Lord and say, Lord, will you take this anger from me so that I can go to bed or I confess without it to you and resentment give it to you. Yeah. growing in my heart. Right. That's the issue, right? It's not, it's not the anger that's a problem. It's that anger turns into resentment, which turns into bitterness. And bitterness is a weed that takes root in your heart and destroys all areas of your of your person. Right. Um, so maybe if it's getting to be this this a fight has lasted a while we're getting tired it's not going anywhere right now maybe what you need to say is I'm angry you're angry let's give this over to the Lord let's pray and confess give this anger over to the Lord ask him to heal that anger in us and then let's come back tomorrow evening to finish our fight or our discussion or whatever that is and resolve exactly right it's good. Yeah. It's good, man. Okay. So then, um, if you have an issue that you just can't seem to overcome, what the heck do you do? We've had this happen to us before where, you know, we just have something that's that we are, we just cannot resolve between the two of us. I tried and she just couldn't get over it. Always. Yep. So, best thing to do is bring a trusted couple <laughs> in. So, like, if you have a mentor couple, bring a trusted couple in yeah. to help mediate the discussion or help to find a resolution. Yep. Uh, we've been mediated. So this is an interesting concept that we have suggested to people. If you don't seem to be able to fight fair, fight well, and it always devolves into name calling, whatever whatever. it is, what you may need to do for a while is when you have an issue, a big issue that you are needing to fight about, you choose to have a mentor couple or mediating couple or whatever, just sit there. They don't need to add to your fight they don't need to talk to you about it but you fight in front of that because you're on your best behavior then right you and your spouse will be on such better behavior and come to resolution i promise you on that issue uh when you have another couple who's just mediating and really what they're doing is sitting there and praying for you right and they they might not have any impact they might not say a word word, but you're on your best behavior so that's if you can't seem to Fight fair. I would suggest really suggest doing that. If you can't have find resolution, then you may need to have somebody who helps you find resolution. So yep. then a mentor couple, somebody that you trust, who can give wisdom, hear your hear both of your sides, give some wisdom, give some some um, you know maybe tips or thoughts and whatever. So and who and who understands God's design for marriage? Yes, people who are for biblical marriage. Yep. 
Yep, totally. Last one then. I, I warned everyone that it was coming. So if you know that there's a contentious topic that needs to be discussed, right? Sex is a tool that God Whoa, you just has, went right into I it. I went right no into it. <laughs> sex, right into it. <laughs> wow. Sex is a tool that God gave in marriage. It's a picture. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Sex is a is a physical picture husband and wife do that's a picture of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of us that we receive when we give our lives to, to Jesus. Um, Jesus promised it in the New Testament that he would send a helper to be inside of us, to help motivate us and empower us. And sex is a picture of that. But as with so many things with God, when he gives us a gift... It's got so many different facets mm-hmm. that we really spend our lives figuring it all out, and and sex certainly is one of those. Um, when we're not, when the world's not busy perverting it, it really is a beautiful gift that we that we can stand in awe of. And one of the amazing things about sex is its ability to, regardless of the circumstances, put two human beings really on the same page. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you know there's a topic that you need to discuss that you know is going to be contentious. And obviously this is something you decide as a couple, right? That you, you know, are going to have sex before you have that conversation um, because it puts you on the same page. Mm -hmm. This is not a tool that is used to get your wife to have sex with you so that you can spring a contentious topic on her, Mm -hmm. right? That is manipulation and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is something that as a couple... You know, maybe not every time. Maybe every time. It's really up to you and your and your spouse. But my point is um, that it's a tool that the Lord has given that's available to us that we could probably make better use of as couples when we know there are those times when we need to right. have those hard conversations. Yeah, yeah that's so. great. So there you have it, guys. That's uh, kind of our fight hacks. So uh, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate you being here. We've got Family Friday coming up here in a few days, and then we'll be off to the weekend again. Until then, guys, remember, God is for your marriage. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to, like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at Marriage by Design Podcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account that is at Marriage X Design. Thanks, and have a great day.